Whoa. Me, me, whoa. Just out of the kindness of his heart. Ow. 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 Oh. Uh, ha. Top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? On this channel, we upload one beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece a week. This video is uncut. In today's uncut video, I was going to address some comments uh, about particularly my, my physical being that were made and uh, talk about what that journey has been like for me, as well as I'm going to pull out a couple of our carpet pythons, our only two carpet pythons actually that we have here at Triple B, and do a little update on them as well. So as you've been following any of my videos here, you know that there's been this overarching theme of me trying to get into the best physical condition of my life, getting close, and then letting it all go. That's been like for the last five years, I've been trying to get to this magic number that I've had in my head of 172 pounds, which is, I'm still not there yet. And I've gotten close to it many times over the past five years and then back up to like 200 plus. And as somebody whose mental health is very strongly tied with my physical health, that's been quite the journey emotionally too. But I'm again close, sitting about 179, 178, give or take. So I'm, I'm close again. And I'm thinking that this time I'm going to make it. And my point of talking about this is to, again, address the comments that were asking, what have I been doing? Because this time I think that I'm, not only has it, has it been feeling the most sustainable as it's ever felt any time I've tried to do this, uh, but also I feel like I'm actually going to get there this time very slowly. And and for those comments that are probably coming about like the number doesn't matter, I, I agree. It, it doesn't matter in general. Like, in fact, this time I'm not just losing weight, I'm actually gaining muscle, which makes getting to that number even more of a fun journey because like it's less of just losing weight. I'm actually like reconstituting fat into muscle, which has been amazing. But also just that number is just a number for me. And I, I'm well aware that you can be physically healthy without having to attach a specific weight number to it. However, for me, it's just been this number. It's been my head, 172. I just feel like that's where I'm going to be like in top fighting condition, just like the best physical condition I've ever been in my life. And when I get there, I'll probably imagine I won't stay there. I'll probably like, you know, come back to a more reasonable number of 177 or something. Who knows? The number again is, shouldn't be as important to me as it is, but it is. But I want to talk about what I've been doing. So I found this program and I'm, I'm going to step back just for my own and as well as yours so that you have like, I feel like I've got a reasonable, like, I, can, I can talk about this. You know, I can, I can talk about because I'm getting close. I'm just, just show that I, I'm, I'm actually getting into a physical condition that I've never been in my life. And there's this program I found with all, after all the research, and I've done so many things in the past. I've tried, you know, veganism. I've tried raw food diet only. I've tried keto. I've tried low carb. I've tried this, that. I've tried so many different diets, fasting, master cleanses, like, you know, borderline unhealthy stuff. And this is the only thing where there's seems to be a, this built-in thing of grace, which has been huge. You know, like, for example, last night, I didn't mess up, which is what I used to call it. My doctor really encouraged me to not say that I'm messing up when what happened last night happens, which is my father-in-law has been visiting and he loves to bring over cherry pie crumble, which are fantastic because it's a locally made pie. It's so good. And I thought I had hit my calories for the day, which has definitely been part of my success here so far is the calorie counting. But I, I hit my calories today, went to sleep, woke up in the middle of the night, and now we have a lockbox to keep lots of sweet stuff in. But that cherry pie was out and as well as the ice cream in the freezer that was to go with that cherry pie. So I went in had myself a good helping of uh, vanilla ice cream with some nice cherry pie crumble on top, which was phenomenal. And thanks to my doctor's prompting, I, I didn't mess up. I just enjoyed some ice cream and some pie last night, which in the past, I would have said that I, I messed up. You know, I'm trying to do this diet and I'm trying to get to this place. And I've had ice cream when I didn't necessarily want to or didn't necessarily intend to. It was just kind of a weak spot for me where I, I just kind of gave in to the craving and yet, and so I'm still working on that. You see, I said, talk, using these words like I gave in to it because I did, but also like my doctor has really, really tried to drive home to me that like, that's okay. It's not asking me to be perfect just as long as the overall arching, overarching um, trend is that I'm eating mostly healthy most of the time, which has been the case. Um, 
my AC is going to kick on. I'm going to turn it off because it's loud. So after doing lots of research into what could potentially work for me, I found this program called BWS. It stands for Built with Science. I'll probably link their channel here. It's a huge, huge channel, and they've put together this program that they tailor to you. So the thing that kind of drew me in was they have this like intake or as they're tailoring a program for you, they ask you, it's like a 30, 30 minute, like a 30 minute quiz that I had to take to answer all these questions about myself and like my habits and my this, my that, like very, very in-depth um, intake form. And they custom build a program around you that includes diet and workouts. So the diet thing, the simplicity of it and the tools they give you have been what have been very helpful. They give you this pocket calculator coach where you plug in your weight every morning as well as the calories you ate. So you do have to track calories, which seems that if you want to hit any kind of weight goal at all, like not tracking your calories makes it next to impossible to do if you don't, uh, because you just are basically guessing at like how much you're intaking. And the big thing of the thermogenesis is that you're not taking in more calories than you're burning if you're trying to lose weight, which I am mainly in the form of fat, but also with the workouts, as I mentioned, I'm like gaining muscle too. And so it's this fun, like I've kind of not lost a ton of weight. Well, I, I guess I have, considering I started at 200 something when I was really ballooned up. But I think a lot of that is just like inflammation and just like my body letting go of like this extra water and whatnot that it was holding on to. Because I was at about 200 and now I'm sitting about 178. So that's that's a reasonable amount of weight to lose, but um, still not to that number that I'm trying to get to. So anyway, there's a calculator where you plug in your weight every morning and you plug in your calories that you ate the day before and you do that every day and even if you don't they say it's, it's an okay it'll still work as long as you like the overarching trend is that you are almost always tracking calories for the day and, and doing it as much as possible and again giving that that grace of like if you don't if you don't track your calories for one day don't give up don't like be like oh i quit i i, I messed up and i i fell off the train and I, i'm not tracking anymore just just jump back on no matter how long it is which i've been doing this past summer i've you know, traveled a lot. And a lot of times during that travel, I just stopped tracking because it's like visiting with family and trying to enjoy life and not be on this super strict, just like, which is possible and you could do, but I, I haven't. And, but I'm still staying on the track. This that's been like three months now and I'm still on this journey without totally reverting and going back to just not taking care of myself whatsoever, which is what has always happened in the past. So that calculator actually adjusts. So when you start plugging in your weight and your calories, it has an algorithm built into the calculator well, where it'll start adjusting how many calories you should be taking in based on what your goal is and making sure you hit the right amount of protein per day, uh, generally, you know, overall. And that has been quite helpful because it's very loose. It's like you can kind of eat whatever you want as long as you're staying under your calories and hitting your protein. Obviously, you want to eat as many vegetables and you know as clean protein sources as possible. But the way the science of it works is that as long as you're hitting those calories and that amount of protein, you'll be still getting towards your goal of general health. Um, and then the workouts have been four days a week, and they customize that too based on you, you can do like a three per day, three week per three day per week thing, a four day per week, a five day per week. I don't know if they had a two, but and I've been sticking to that and just do it first thing in the morning and go and just knock it out so that it's not, I don't give myself an opportunity to not do it. I just wake up and know that I'm going to the gym and it's obviously work. I mean, any, if you want to get into good physical condition, like exercise and work, that's part of it. You can't just sit on your butt and expect to get into good physical condition. That's just, this is not how it works. Luckily, I've been enjoying it and finding this thing. And even if I don't make it all the time, like I said, with traveling, like if I only make it three days a week, not the end of the world. You know, if I make it two days a week because of travel or, you know, not normal circumstances, which is going to happen a lot for me next month, not the end of the world, just get back in and keep going. And with the amount of grace that's been built into this program, that seems to be what I'm doing now, even with four kids, even running a full-time business, even doing part-time ministry, even all these other things that are happening, I'm still able to balance in this. And A, thank you for noticing and asking me to explain what's been happening with me to where I've gotten to where I've gotten so far. And B, Ryan is me. <laughs> Let's show those snakes. Uh, stoked. Thanks. Thanks again for Nosea. Cause like I have been working pretty hard and I am pretty, pretty excited about where I've gotten to so far and feeling pretty good about it mentally and physically. 
and spiritually. So thank you. Snake number one, let's start with Holly. She is, she is of course, our caramel coastal carpet python that we got from our buddy Travis over at Living Like Loose Reptiles the first time I went to, I believe it was, yes, the first time I went to a uh, Southwest Carpet Fest and Travis was hosting and they had their US ARC auction there and I, I won a certain amount of, uh, you know, uh, money's worth of one of Travis's snakes, and this is the snake that I got, Holly, our female caramel coastal carpet python. And then the second snake I'm about to show you, my buddy Riley, Riley's Reptiles, had, you know, is always wanting more carpet pythons in the world, as a Morelia enthusiast he is. Um, and so he he sent me a male to go with her, out, just out of the kindness of his heart. Ow! <laughs> and apparently um, my arm smells like a rat or something, and she's going to now try and eat it. Huh, tail. Uh-oh. That's not a rat. Thank you. Don't do it again. <laughs> no! <laughs> All right. Apparently she's hungry, and I do have rats in the room. <laughs> you know what's funny? She's never done that to me, like, ever. I've certainly... Oh, you know what? I was, I was taking rats that hadn't been eaten by um, some of the baby ball pythons and moving them, so I'm sure I have rat smell on me. She's just like, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat you now. Um, dang it, Holly. <laughs> now I can't, uh, say that you've never bit me. That, that was the first. Well, there you go. Nothing to write home about. I'll put her down for now and get out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know one of the things that, uh, my Morelia enthusiast friends try to really drive home is like, they, they definitely mellow out. And she is. She's super mellow. She's never bit me. That wasn't a defensive bite. She is in food mode right now. <laughs> And that's enough food response bites for the day. Maybe. <laughs> and this is our little tiger, um, Hedexanthic coastal carpet python from Riley, as I mentioned. And this dude could also potentially do what, what Holly just did because he also enjoys food and has had no problem eating. I'll try to keep my face out of the frame so that he stays, we stay focused on the snake here. Hopefully, the fact that my apparent rat-infested uh, scent of a body and hand is not going to entice him to do the same thing, although it would be much less eventful or much less painful because his teeth are much smaller than Holly's are. Um, yeah, so that's that. And gosh, I can't keep my face out of the frame. Focus on the snake. All right, there he is. He's doing awesome, and uh, I imagine that... It, the plan will be once he is of age and size, we'll start pairing him with Holly and get some little cool carpet pythons of our own that we produce. It'll be our first carpet python clutch that we produce over here at Shovel B. Will be one from two of my good friends, Riley and Travis. And he's looking awesome, doing awesome, and not giving me a feeding response bite, which is great. Um, you know, I guess there's probably you probably know already about like anticoagulant in snake saliva and whatnot. But the thing that's really good about it is that if it does bite you, um, then anticoagulant allows the blood to not clot and push out a little bit some of whatever impurities might have gotten driven into your skin by the tiny teeth of the snake. Um, and that's nice because it really... Whoa! <laughs> Almost caught one right to the lip. <laughs> We're having a good day. We're having a good time. I didn't catch it to the lip, so that's fantastic. You know, thanks for watching. Y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on this weekend for um, another video with more snakes. <laughs>